Okay, welcome to the next segment of um, building the Cadet LT-40. The box arrived last night about 8 o'clock, so I didn't get a chance to open it. So it's uh, morning, good morning to you all. And I have ready my box cutter, I have an X-Acto knife and a pair of scissors, and we're going to open it up. <clears throat> now the box is a is a shipping box first and then inside another box. So we'll start with the shipping box. I noticed that the box has a small dent right here, it's relatively small from shipping. I don't think it'll be a problem. I like a shipping box like this, where the um, box opens from the top, and it is my um, uh, manifest for shipping. It was shipped from Monroe, Wisconsin, uh, to my address here in South Carolina, and the total cost was $220. So. That's the box it's inside. We'll take that out. And get rid of the shipping box. Okay, so. There's a small dent in here, but uh, again, I don't think it made any damages. Okay, this box isn't taped, so I should be able to just lift it off. And as you can see, nice big picture of the cadet and um, gives you all the bigger and better reasons why it's a good airplane for training. Inside is the manual. Um, the manual we've already seen because I downloaded it from the internet. Next is, let me get a pair of scissors. Next is the uh, horizontal stabilizer. Looks in pretty good conditions. Just a few very, very minor wrinkles. And then the left and right wing. Wings look in very good shape. Don't see very many wrinkles at all. Nice big letters, Cadet LT40EG. E stands for electric or gas slash go. That is the vertical fin and rudder. And here is the other wing. Again, that particular wing looks in very good shape. Very few um, wrinkles on it. Insert. Okay. Next we have some push rods. Looks like um, four push rods, or I'm sorry, yeah, four push rods. One that has a uh, Z bend on it. The other three don't. The Z bend is probably for the um, um, the servo for the throttle, but we'll see. I've got a bag, a bag of parts that has wheels and and uh, tank and tank parts. I've got the cowl. Again, you won't find very many trainer aircraft of this size with a cowl. 
got the um, um, fuselage in very good shape. Don't see very many wrinkles. And this is a surprise. Um, always nice to have a little surprise. I found another um, uh, push rod, small push rod. And this is a aluminum wing tube. So even though I downloaded the instruction manual, um, this is a, a tube which means very nicely that you can see in the uh, side here you got an aluminum tube to put that on and it looks like they have made this so that the wing can come apart and you don't have to glue it. That'll be very nice. And then I got another bag of uh, parts and wooden pieces and another small um, push rod. So, that's the contents. Um, I'm going to stop the video now and we'll see um, how that worked. And um, then I'll go into the details of opening up each, each part. Okay, welcome back. Um, after opening and taking off the covers for the plastic off of all of these parts, I've noted several changes from the original manual that I read. I've read the new manual and I want to point out some of those changes. First off on the fuselage, uh, there's several uh, differences. One is the nose wheel bracket is already installed, that's good. The um, blind nuts are obviously in place for the motor. Um, the hatch uh, has two magnets at the top. You, you, you lift here and you open the hatch and there, there are the two magnets and the two magnets uh, uh, here and it comes off as one big piece and you have lots of, of ability to get into uh, the hatch area where the fuel tank will be. So that's uh, uh, a nice change. The um, Everything else I think on the fuselage is the same. On the wings, as I said before, there's a tube that will run, it's an aluminum tube that will run through this hole here. And you'll see a string um, that goes from where the aileron sits, the aileron servo sits, over to the center. And that string is for pulling the wire of the aileron after you mount it through there and out here so then you can attach it inside the aircraft. So don't pull that string until you're attaching the um, uh, aileron servo. It does require two aileron servos so that's now a total of five servos for this airplane. Glad I ordered an extra one because I did order five. I always order one extra and I'll order an extra one later. Uh, so, but I do have five ailerons, five servos uh, on order. Um, the there's a dowel on this one, and a matching uh, hole on the other one, so that this is um, this wing is going to be uh, well uh, put together and latched down. You've got two large. Um, I'm around here to show you. There's two large um, pieces of wood here that allow you to put this into the nose so that it stays down. Also, all of the um, um, control surfaces, in this case the aileron, okay, have CA hinges here. And if you're very careful, I'll do this. I wouldn't suggest you do it, but the aileron has a, uh, a series of CA hinges. There's one, two, three, four um, uh, hinges that are sort of 
a fabric hinge that you drop CA glue on and so they're in there but the CA is not there that's good so um, it's not hard now that they're in place just to drop some CA hinges and let them dry CA glue on them and let them dry we'll do that in another video uh, the, other <coughs> the other nice thing is for um, the elevator and rudder and the horizontal and vertical stabilizer again these hinges are uh, installed but not glued but they have removed the covering for you. That's very nice because that's always a pain to remove that covering for the um, uh, gluing it on to the tail of the airplane and gluing the vertical stabilizer here. All that covering is removed, which is very good. And the um, the um, uh, bottom part of the of the uh, Vertical stabilizer also is ready to be glued. Again, these hinges are, are loose, so be careful with it. The cowl is uh, about what I expected. The um, uh, push rods are all here. Um, they have a, a small nut at the end, and they use um, a metal clevis, and that little nut on the end of the push rod is for uh, locking in that metal clevis. Uh, one thing I did note was there is one um, push rod that uh, has a Z-bend on it and that's for the nose wheel. When I got it there's also a plastic tube and the plastic tube was on the wrong wire. It was on the wire with the Z-bend. That Z-bend is for the um, nose wheel, but the, the plastic tube is for the throttle because you want that throttle to move very smoothly and that goes in a plastic tube. So the throttle is the one, is the shorter of these two wires that has the nut on it and uh, make sure they, that you uh, do pair that up correctly. You've got two small wires for uh, the servo uh, to aileron connection and um, so that's about it for for the first for the next part here the next thing I'm going to do is open these bags and I'll show you the contents of those and uh, show you how I package them and I'll continue to go through the two pages in the book that uh, have all the parts I made copies of those so I can uh, check them off and we'll do that next Stay tuned.